Livio, welcome back to the podcast. It's a new season starting and I'm trying to do more interview of skater, trying to do more content to, sp to speak about the season, but maybe let's go back to your amazing medals you got uh, in your log track uh, world championship. You made history for Swiss uh, Federation, I guess. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, it was the first ever medal for Switzerland at a speed skating world championship. And uh, that is huge for a, for a country like ours, with no big uh, history. Well, we have big history, but not a successful history, if you can say it like that. Um, so yeah, it makes me really proud. Uh, the hard work of Kalen over all those years really paid off now, you can say. But I mean, obviously, before I was at the Olympics, so yeah. But to be on a podium, it's a, it's a completely different level. And But yeah, I'm not done. I want to be second or first one day. and. Uh, I won't give up and let's see what's possible in the next couple of years. Yeah, I can see it's super close. You really increase a lot uh, your maximum speed. I guess it's uh, kind of your tactic with Kellen to, mm -hmm. to work on your high speed. I saw you were doing some thousand meter. Also, I guess to work this uh, last lap in uh, the mass start. Uh, it's basically one of the best tactics to get a medal, I guess. It's the only tactic to really fight for the win. Um, of course, there's breakaways that go through. Uh, I, I believe that the race will change a little bit over the next two years. Also when a guy like Jordan Stoltz will highly likely come into it, who is a 500 meter world champion. So that forces the now fastest people um, to also go maybe more on breakaways again, like Bart, um, like myself, um, the Dutch probably. So I think it's going to be even more exciting in the next two years coming. Um, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, I won't give up, but yeah, definitely this year we focused a lot on the on the sprint, uh, especially the last couple of weeks where we knew my, my chance at the World Championship was only in the mass start to get a medal. So we put our all our focus onto onto the technique and sprint, and yeah, it paid off for now. Uh, not not fully fully. Bart was a little bit too strong in that race, but like I said, I, I won't give up, and one day. One day I'll hopefully be on the top. Yeah, it's getting really close. Actually, you crashed also in yeah. the final. That was super spectacular. Yeah, with crazy. the guy from Netherlands pulling you yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. cool. And uh, but now you're already back in Geisingen. Mm -hmm. um, I put the focus a little bit uh, first on marathons mm -hmm. because yeah. uh, you see there is actually a lot of marathons coming back. The Swiss skater is pushing back again. Mm -hmm. I saw there is a cool event in Bern coming back with a nice circuit for the 17th of August, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. There is still a strong uh, World in Line Cup. Uh, it's uh, 25 years of the World in Line Cup season, yeah, so yes. quite a while. Makes me feel a little bit older again. <laughs> and uh, and the, <laughs> the news is also the, the new World Skate uh, Marathon Tour. Mm -hmm with a three stage, one in Shanghai, one in Pescara, one in Cuba. And I think this is the biggest change of the season so far because it's much more money coming back in the sport. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about uh, this financial coming back into uh, the speed skating, inline skating? Yeah, I, I disagree a little bit on that money comes back into the sport. That is true for the absolute, absolute top elite, like the power slide team and the people that really want to go or have the, the big sponsors backing to go to the World Skate Tours. And I also support it a lot with the Arena Geisingen team. I push for it that this happens because at the end of the day we live off the skaters. And at the moment uh, the inline skater, especially in Europe, cannot live from, from inline skating. And I hope this is a step into the right direction to change that. But just big prize money doesn't help yet. Um, this needs to be bigger, needs to be better. Um, I see it as a great starting point, but we need to keep pushing in those next years to, to get hopefully salaries for, for athletes back, that they can actually focus more on training, focus more on marathons. Because to be honest, I, I completely missed the marathon scene. I grew up with a marathon scene in, in the Swiss Inline Cup back in the day. I saw everything when Massimiliano Presti was winning or, or Joey Mantia or even earlier than that. Um, so I grew up with that but I didn't grow big with that. So for me, I only existed on the track. The marathon scene was basically dead the last couple of years. So a lot of props to the, to, to the World Inland Cup that they kept it somehow going when they could have just let it fall. But that maybe would have been even more the death for our sport. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, really glad to see that the marathon scenes are slowly coming back. 
and I myself will do a lot more marathons this year, which is also great preparation for my ice seasons. I will do a lot of Swiss skate tours. Uh, I won't be able to do the World Skate Tour in Shanghai yet. Um, uh, like I said, it's still uh, still financial a lot to go to these races. So we will definitely send some Marina guys in and skaters, which is a great news. But myself won't be there, won't be there yet. But yeah. I'll be definitely doing Pescara and maybe the one in Cuba. Okay, yeah, for sure. I I think three stages is not too much or so. Uh, it's important to start uh, with this kind of number of stages. If yeah. we, if the World Skate Tour was starting with also six, seven stage, it would be too complex because for sure. there is still the Swiss Skate Tour that is mm -hmm. having I think five stage. Mm -hmm. uh, the World Inline Cup is having six or seven stage mm -hmm. with different levels. So. Uh, like you say, the team are not so strong yet enough. Exactly. Uh, so they need still to have uh, some power to bring the skater to the race, and then maybe one day be able to to pay back the skater. Yeah, but, um, absolutely. Uh, I think to be able to pay back the skater, uh, the sales need to be pushed also. Uh, Everything it, it needs to be pushed on every area. It's from the kit to the master to the to the speed skater. Everything has to be pushed and. People need to work together on this. Um, I think it would also help in the future to have that one great race series again. Um, I really, I really hope this is going to happen in the future. Uh, whatever it's going to be called in the uh, cold in the end doesn't doesn't really matter. But it needs to be the high class level on the on the marathons. It needs to be events like the Arena Geising and two, three a year. It, it needs those high, high, high level yeah. racing I see where people actually can go earn money and, and that would be awesome for the sport but like you said it, it takes it takes time and this is also the problem right now there is maybe a handful of marathon proper proper marathon skaters and but I really believe if a race series like the World Skate Tour this is this year it's gonna grow to maybe 10 proper marathon skaters that really are focused on it and, and then over the years it's gonna grow and hopefully, like I still remember those pictures from back in the day when there was a mass sprint in Zurich and there 200 people arrived at the same time. It was amazing to watch, it was goosebumps for me as a little kid to watch that and just uh, the sheer thought of that coming back will be absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's already still there on the track and if you look the yeah. race like the Geisingen, uh, it's gonna be a little more than one month uh, for me now and uh, the level is crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can see uh, the registration was open and in 15 minutes all the senior <laughs> yeah. uh, spot was already filled so yeah. uh, that shows how many people want to come mm -hmm. to this race and um, for me it's important in the sport we have uh, this marathon scene and it's nice to have different series. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need to focus on only one series. Mm -hmm. I think uh, having a choice with the Swiss uh, Skate Tour Week and uh, World Skate Marathon Tour is nice. Mm -hmm. It would be nice if there is also uh, a World Tour for the track races. That uh, would like be the, the European uh, Inline Cup is doing a good job. Yeah. But uh, when I look at uh, Arena Geising and Race, it's almost uh, too big now. Exactly. It's almost like we would need also three events for track. Uh, that would be nice to have a track world uh, tour or so, maybe one stage in Colombia, one stage in Geisingen, mm, one stage in Asia, Asia yeah. and that would be cool to have this. Uh, yeah. No, absolutely. This is, I think this is the future of the, sport, of the sport. We also cannot look too much into cycling. Um, I think the track is still the heart of the sport and we also need to push the track racing as the track racing survived over, the, over this last period. And, and for me, the level on the track is higher than it ever was, especially yeah, when, crazy, I, yeah. when, when you think now in sprinting, when you look at the times in the 200 meters and you're 0.2 back and you're not even in the final anymore. So it's, but this is what the sport needs. This is what's, what is exciting. And yeah, I, the I level is so high. I remember when Edwin Estrada, he made the hits of the 500 meters a little bit easy yeah. and he was world champion of the distance yeah, yeah. and he was kicked out and not even in the quarterfinal. Exactly. So yeah. that's, that shows how much the level on yeah. track went up. Uh, you see all the younger ones, they focus first on track. And mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, the level is mm. super, super high uh, at the yeah, moment. for sure. No, but I still believe it needs that marathon skating. The, it's the, the classic move because at one point it's also there is not enough professionalism in, in our sport at the moment. This is why so many inline skaters go to the ice. Also, of course, with the Olympic dream in, in, in mind. Like, yeah. It is the same for me. I, I cannot live with inline skating. Yeah. I can live sport, professional sport, because of ice skating. Yeah. That was actually one of, of my points from this podcast. Uh, 
I, I guess your earth, your passion is first on in line. Mm -hmm. Do you think if you had been able to leave uh, and win uh, quite some good money on inline skating, do you think you would have still moved on the ice? I don't, I don't know, to be honest. Um, the, it always, a lot depends on timing as well. So I was also skating at, at an era or came into the sport at an era where I was so far away from the top because I remember I came in, Bart Swings was already there, of course, but you still had Alexi Conta, you even had Jan Guya there, still there. Um, Peter Michael was there and, and for me those guys were so far in front of me and I thought I'll never reach even closely that level. Then I got the chance to train, start training a lot with Peter Michael and I could really claw my way onto him and get better every day and suddenly I, I had a training where I was better than him and uh, and yeah so this is where i found my groove and yeah. how, and how many so years it takes because when you say this it reminds me a little bit felix Reinhardt also For like sure. when you you were maybe in your 20s mm -hmm. you you feel like the top level is quite far mm -hmm. but It seems you work so hard for so many years, but with so much consistency mm -hmm. that now you also reach that high level. Yeah, obviously, like I, I still am not Mr. Consistency like Bart Swings, for example, but I, I definitely reached a level now where I can call myself world-class inline skater. And uh, obviously the professionalism on ice helped me. Like I said, back in the day, it helped me that I had amazing training partners. Like actually it started with Scott Arledge, Kalen Dobbin, of course, took me in under his wing and, and then continues training with high-level partners. Then after my last junior year, I got a chance to go into the Power Slide World Team. And this was really the big change for me because there I said, okay, Livia, now it's time to work even harder than ever to prove that you belong in this team. Because for sure, people thought, why is Livio in this team? Like, he's not ready yet for senior level. But this is awesome that Power Slide gave me the chance back, in, back then. So it gave me so much chance to be in a professional team of guys like Par, uh, Bart or Peter and, and all those people and to be able to also train with them, that really helped me a lot and become more consistent. Yeah. This is where you realize kind of the gap and the effort you have to put. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And also the, maybe like you say, you feel you're not there yet and you have to prove mm. like like say people say hey why Livio is in the team yeah yeah and but for sure it doesn't it takes time also to grow in the team to mm. reach the level yeah for sure it's super difficult for sure no the the thing was also already back then i had flashes like flashes of being good or having good races but i had maybe one or two a season for example i remember my, one of my first year senior i did I got like second in the heat here in the flying lap and then fourth in the final and everybody's like, oh my God, where did that come from? And so everybody or like the people in powers that knew the ta talent was there. It just needs time to develop. And then obviously what was hard too, back then I started also ice skating at the same time. So to have the double season when I was so young was really hard for me to manage for a couple of years. Um, but yeah, I always managed some great results each year, but the consistency, that took a very, very long time to be consistently on a high level. Yeah. Uh, how do you manage the rest in between the two seasons? Because for, for me, I start ice very late. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, I had yeah. a chance to win quite some money on inline, so I was yeah. staying on inline. Mm -hmm. But really, at the end of my career, I did five years of ice and some double season, uh -huh. which I, I managed pretty bad, actually, when yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I realized back in I the days. And how, how do you do now? You guys have more experience about it. You start uh, ice and inline uh, earlier. I guess you were maybe in the 20s, mm -hmm. something like this. How, how do you manage your rest between those seasons? It, it, is, it is just the management of um, trusting in your coach and the plan they put together. And I think it is, what helped me a lot is in the start, when I started, I had ice coaches and inline coaches. Or I had Caelan Dobbin on inline and I had specialized ice coaches on ice, which were amazing. Like I was able to train with Jeremy Waterspoon, for example, wow, cool. who's one of the greatest skater of all time. And he helped me a lot, especially when I was able to skate behind him. But to be honest, what he was talking about in the training back then, I didn't even understand because he was so detail orientated. Um, he was quite new into coaching. He was a super high level coach. 
and I simply didn't have that level. I was a 38, 39 second skater in the 500 meter, a 650 skater in the 5K. So that was too high level for me. And this is where I asked Kalen for help and asked Kalen what do I need to do? And he just said, we need, you're an inline skater, you're different. We need to start on the basics. So this is really the step we did on the ice. We had to go completely back to basics to learn how to skate, which was maybe not the best right at that time. But in the long run, it definitely helped me and also keep doing a lot of skating in the winter, which is not normal for ice. So to keep the condition also for the summer coming. So back like then I realized, OK, it really helps to have a coach all around the year who is on the same, same length, page, uh, yeah. same page mm -hmm. basically. Or if you I don't say it doesn't work with two coaches as long as they're on the same page. Yeah. But back then I was just going into a program, into another program and then into the next program. Yeah, and difficult. then it got really, really difficult yeah. and the body couldn't handle, the mind couldn't handle it. So it was a lot of learning years to, to learn how to do it. I still don't say we know everything now, but we know a lot more. Uh, and this is also awesome now when we can see new inliners come and help. The, they reach so much faster their potential yeah. um, than I no, have. It's, it's, but it's you like, learn out of mistakes, right? It's like the, uh, every generation of inline ice skater are, are bringing more knowledge yeah. and the transition is easier and easier to do. Yeah. I feel yeah, it's still super complex and hard, Very. of course, <laughs> because uh, both sports are yeah. high level, but it looks like the transition is easier a bit. Uh, maybe also the way inline skating is changing. Uh, we have bigger wheels, exactly. we have higher speed, so at the end, the rhythm of skating is, is more and more similar. And maybe I'm wrong, but when I look at the long track races, I also feel the they skate less with longer step than before. No, no, much less. They make much more rhythm yeah, yeah. in the skating, which is going more similar to inline skating. Yes. So maybe the difference between the two sports is getting smaller and smaller. Yes, yeah, when you see earlier back in the day, I think Sven Kramer's world record when he did his 604 in 06, 07. He did, uh, he did six, six strokes on the straight, yeah. super long rhythm and loading and holding and stuff. And a lot of people for many years tried to teach that. Yeah. But also, first of all, each skater is individual. Now you see people doing eight steps by the end of the race, even yeah. 10 steps yes. on the straight. And about the only skater still on six is Giotto probably. Mm -hmm. And then in the corner, Niels Vanderpool brought in a whole other level of rhythm. Yeah. So, of course, it's changing, but that's sport. When it's, if sport doesn't evolve anymore, then something's wrong with the sport. Yeah, it, does it um, come also a bit from the blade? Did the blade change a bit uh, in the last five, six years to there, create that change? Or? There's some new medals, uh, uh, models came in. I don't know how much the metal changed. I'm not too much involved into the technical aspect there. But the, def the blade's definitely been better, more consistent. Um, so I don't, I, don't, I don't really think that was the, is the reason though. I still think if uh, the best skaters skating on the Naganos or the Maple Blades, I still think they do very, very similar times to what they do now. I think the training bro programs evolved. Um, yeah. Then the material didn't change that much. We're still skating on basically the same so Nike cut suit okay. from the 2000s. It's just different names on the suits now, but every, everything else is, is pretty much the same. Okay, cool. Thanks, Livio, for this uh, little interview. Yeah. I appreciate uh, you share your knowledge, mm -hmm. and it's always nice to see you here in the Arena Geisingen. It's a, I mean, your home uh, for training. For sure. Thank you, Pascal. Uh, thank you. See you very soon, Livio. Awesome. Thank you.